Hey, welcome back. Today we are going to go through another time-lapse uh, quick fan art video of a piece I made earlier this year. It was uh, none other than Sega mascot himself and 90s video game icon Sonic the Hedgehog, as well as a few of his friends, Knuckles and Tails. So if you're like me and you grew up in the 90s or spent a lot of childhood in the 90s, you will have spent a lot of your childhood glued in front of a television set with a Sega Genesis or a Super Nintendo or what have you. But uh, we all had our Sega Genesis years, right? And we all spent hours, countless hours, playing as Sonic, running across Green Hill Zone or Marble Ruins or Casino Night. And ah, man, it was just fun. And as a kid who grew up ever since he was about four years old, he could pick up a pen and put it to paper and, and create some sort of semblance of shapes. Sonic the Hedgehog was one of the very first ones that I happened to try. I don't know about you, but it's something I've had quite a bit of experience actually sketching. So usually when I put together a new piece of fan art on Procreate on my iPad, uh, I'll, I'll have some reference images just right in front of me. But for this, uh, fortunately, I've had quite a bit of experience sketching Sonic throughout my years. And I've kind of like put together my own version of him that I, I actually love sketching. So I didn't really need any reference images for this one. Uh, I think I did go on Google Images to get a reference for the little minute details in Knuckles. Like he's got some weird shoes. I don't know if you've ever noticed. Out of all the characters on the Sonic games, he had the most detailed shoes. It almost looked like he had a Lego on top of where the shoestrings would be. So that's kind of how I remem remembered it when I was a kid and sketching it, because everyone lo uh, loves Legos, everyone's played with Legos. But it was always so hard to remember the color scheme. So that was pretty much the only reference I used for this. Um, I don't know about you, but everyone has their favorite version of Sonic and their least favorite, which is the, the movie trailer that came out earlier this year. Um, <laughs> but the new Sonic should be better. That's what, what they're saying. But everyone has their a favorite version, like the original Sonic from Genesis, or Sonic Adventure, where he gets his long hair and his green eyes, or the anime Sonic from the late 90s, which was really cool. He had short hair and he was more, um, he had really big uh, extremities, like fingers and big shoes and really short hair, and it just made him look more sleek, but at the same time more uh, silly and cartoonish, but it was still really cool. I have a really deep uh, appreciation for the anime Sonic, the original anime Sonic movie that came out. Um, then you have like Sonic X, Sonic Underground design, uh, Saturday morning, all sorts of different Sonic designs. And it seems like they have a new one every two or three years. Like Sonic Boom just came out a few years ago and uh, they had a cartoon for that. And that was by far, I think the, the farthest design concept for a Sonic that came out since uh, Genesis. It, it's just amazing how much the characters changed and evolved for different concepts and designs. So for this, since it's pretty much the only, I knew it would be the only piece of fan art I did uh, that would I, I would sell as prints at Comic Cons and Anime Cons, Video Game Cons, especially. It sells pretty well at Video Game Cons. I wanted to create my own version of Sonic that kind of blended my favorite elements of the different kinds of Sonics that existed throughout the years. So you kind of have a mix between the long hair and the same color blue as Sonic Adventure, but it's also kind of short and wavy and spikier actually than normal, uh, which kind of throws back to the old Sonic anime movie, which is honestly my favorite Sonic. And I, I also wanted to just throw in the classic Sonic Adventure shoes, but the old Sonic, um, the Saturday morning cartoon with the, uh, the classic gloves design, the classic socks and limbs. And I threw in kind of the same Sonic Boom and Sonic Adventure eye color as well. And the same thing rings true with Knuckles and Tails. I wanted to create something that, you know, was kind of my own, but also mixed in a little bit of everything that I liked, like the, uh, you can see with Knuckles, he's kind of more swole than <laughs> typical Knuckles because I actually liked the the big beefy Knuckles that came out with Sonic Boom a few years ago. 
then I was like, hey, that's kind of cool because he doesn't have the same body structure, you know, as Sonic would. And he has different skill set. He's more of a fighter, whereas Sonic's a runner, and Tails is kind of, you know, the brains of the op. He's the inventor. He's the uh, brains of the operation, and he comes up with all the gadgets. So Tails is going to be like the skinniest, of course. So that's what I applied there. Sonic's going to have that lean runner's body. So I, I made uh, some kind of runner's muscle more than you would see in the classic Sonic because he had like no muscle at all. It was really cartoony. So you can see I added more uh, definition, runner's definition. I actually looked at a picture of Usain Bolt. So I did use more than just one uh, reference image of Knuckles' shoes. I actually looked at a picture of Usain, Usain Bolt's legs when he was mid-stride just so I could get the uh, runner's uh, physique down for Sonic, especially with such a deep lunge pose like that um so yeah for this i just wanted to create a really cool action shot of the three of them going through uh green hill zone and you'll see that later when i start working on the background and the foreground but overall i stayed true to a little bit of everything that i could so all sonic fans of all ages from all sorts of backgrounds no matter how much time you spent with sonic i wanted to make this piece super recognizable so that's always a great point. If you're creating fan art that you want to sell at conventions, make something look recognizable, but make it your own. So that's the challenge that I always put myself up against when I'm creating art like this. Um, and see with the colors too, I wanted to make the colors my own too. Uh, Knuckles is more of the, you see, you see right there, I just added a deeper, darker contrasting red shades and uh, more reflective skin on Knuckles, so he's more of the intimidating, uh, scary, like if I saw Knuckles charging at me with those fists in that deep dark scarlet red, I would run away or I would cower in fear. Same with Sonic, I wanted to make him vibrant because when he charges up in that little speedball, he, he's just a big vibrant ball of energy and I wanted to capture that kind of energy that Sonic has because he's, he's the most energetic um, video game mascot if you really think about it. Um, he's always uh, chowing on those chili dogs and keeps him going. <laughs> so uh, same with uh, Tails in the back. I wanted it to be vibrant and because uh, he's always a playful kind of guy and he's always uh, getting into mischiefs with his gadgets and his inventions. So I thought you know the most playful orange would have a little bit of yellow t uh, tint to it. And as you can see, as I finished the main colors of the characters, that's when I added Tails' uh, tails. And instead of having them just open as the two normal tails like he does in any pose, I wanted to have that helicopter blade effect that we are all familiar with when we played as tails. You know, when you're a 2P second player, you gotta play as tails and you gotta use those helicopter blades to the fullest extent to keep up with the Sonic player, right? And to get that shining helicopter blade effect on the wheel behind tails there, I used a lot of oil brushes on Procreate, which is really cool for spreading and reflecting, kind of making a smear look. So it's great for motion. So here's one of my favorite parts. I never thought it would be one of my favorite parts, but trying to recreate the curve of a loop-de-loop -loop in Green Hill Zone, which we're all familiar with. If you've played Sonic, you know the loop-de-loops are super fun. They're always checkerboard, green and yellow, and with a little bit of grass effect. So I used all sorts of stamping brushes. and the. And for the, the clouds in the back, it was just a really simple cloud background with just a lot of stamping brushes and smears and uh, cloud brushes that you can find on Procreate. It actually comes with Procreate. So there's the finished piece, you guys. Check this out. I added some really cool light brush effects for the motion and some smoking effects for the skidding heat. And uh, all in all, I was really happy with it. So if you see me at a convention and you're a Sonic fan, come check that out. Come take a closer look at it and see that thing. Face to face, you'll you'll see that a Sonic fan knows how to create a Sonic tribute piece of art. Well, if you're excited for the new Sonic movie, I think it comes out early next year. Let me know in the comments. I know that they're redesigning him to make him look look less like a creepy little child, so I'm super excited for that. And if you enjoyed this episode of Time Lapse Fan Art with Jet, I would really appreciate just one like. And if you could subscribe, if you're not subscribed already. I would love to see you in future videos, and I'd love to see you on one of these lists. Those were all my Kickstarter backers and my patrons on patreon.com slash jetfalco. If you'd like to support me, even just a like would be amazing. So thank you so much for watching. 
you guys have a great one.